I want you to take a second and look at your clothes. Feel the fabric. And now look at the clothes of the person sitting next to you. What do you like about it? Is it the color? The print? Or the fabric, maybe? Clothes can make us feel more beautiful and confident or comfortable. But clothes also have another role. They protect us from the seasons. They keep us warm in winter, and they keep us protected from the sun and heat in summer. But now imagine, what if clothes could nurture our health? What if clothes could prevent or cure diseases such as cancer? Wouldn't that be brilliant? I don't know if you know, but right now our clothes contain leftover chemicals that come from pesticides of growing cotton, for example, but also from dyeing of fabrics. And our skin is the largest organ we have, and it now absorbs these small amounts of chemicals on a daily basis. And of course, these amounts are tested as safe, but we all have heard about clothing recalls because the amount of chemicals in it is too high. So imagine if clothes could be good for our skin and our health. And not only our health, because did you know that the fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world? For example, 20% of all freshwater pollution is caused by textile dyeing and treatment. So how did we get ourselves into this mess? Well, traditionally, textile dyes were made from nature. They were made from plants like vegetables, flowers, but also from minerals and insects. And these colors came in a limited color range, and the colors faded over time and with use. And the natural resources were also expensive and hard to find. So that's why chemists started looking for alternatives And with the invention of the first synthetic dye, the natural dyes slowly started disappearing. And today, 99% of all dyes are man-made. And these artificial dyes come in a wider color range and brighter shades, and they are also cheaper to produce. But the great downside is that these dyes are made from petrochemicals and that they are hazardous to the environment, people and animals. These dyes cause illness in factory workers and people living off of irrigated agricultural land and rivers. And right now there are about 4,000 different dyes and over 8,000 chemicals that are being used in the production of clothing. So these numbers give an idea of the scale of the industry, but also on how complex the problem is. My name is Laura, and this is Ilfa, and we are both textile designers with a background in fashion. For years, I worked in what we now call fast fashion, and although I really enjoyed my work, I also witnessed up close what is wrong with the fashion system, and I did no longer want to be part of it. So that's why I started my own design studio in the hopes to raise the bar in my own design practice, as well as the industry. Hi, my name is Ilfa. In my designs, I focus on environment and innovation. And I start my designs from out of a material perspective, which means I look at the material and see how I can use it or turn it in a better way or in an alternative way. I started experimenting with future thinking design concepts when I was studying fashion design at the Willem de Koning Academy. Here, well, here I, also tried to, I also started to grow my own materials. We, as a new generation of designers, we can actually grow and tweak our own materials and use this in a positive way. Laura and I, we met each other at the course Textile Academy at Waag Society in Amsterdam. During this course, we were focusing on finding new solutions for the textile and fashion industry. And we did lots of material experiments. We were working with 3D molding programs, hacking a 3D printer. We tried to find the best bioplastic recipe, and we were growing kombucha, for example. But what really captured us was working with bacteria. Did you know that there are bacteria that are producing pigments? 
To us, a whole new world of microorganisms was coming alive in beautiful organic-shaped patterns. This all was so fascinating. So we teamed up together and we started exploring dying textiles with bacteria, and our project Living Color was born. Yes, and during this course, we came up with a crazy idea. What if we can try to manipulate the growth of bacteria, and what if we can grow them in patterns? Because right now, bacteria grow everywhere where there's food and oxygen, which stains the fabric in an uncontrollable way, like you see up here, kind of resembling a tie-dye technique. And we knew that the resonance of sound creates beautiful geometrical patterns. And in solid matter, this is called clanny figures. And what you see up here is sand on top of a metal plate, and the metal plate is connected to a speaker. And what happens is that when the speaker plays different sound frequencies, the sand starts to move towards the plate that don't move. And this is not visible with the naked eye, but sand makes these sound waves visible. And each frequency has its own pattern, which I thought was quite amazing. So we thought, why not try and grow bacteria in these sound waves to see if they would leave these kinds of patterns on fabric? So together with a sound engineer, we built a sound installation in the biomedical lab of the Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences, and we started experimenting. We put little pieces of textile in petri dishes with bacteria on top of a speaker for three days in a row, and we left them there day and night. And at the end of three days, the results were visible. And we did an amazing discovery, because instead of the patterns we were expecting, we saw these pieces of evenly colored fabrics in a really saturated way and without any stains, unless, unlike the fabrics we didn't expose to sound frequencies. So now we actually found a way to dye fabrics in an all-over way. <laughs> and we could not have imagined how promising these results are, because look at these gorgeous colors. They don't even look like natural textile dyes. If you're comparing the current dyes that are being uh, used nowadays in the textile industry, if you compare them to the dyes of living color, the bacteria dyes, the current dyes, they need large amounts of water, while bacteria dyes just need a little bit of water to grow in and to dye the fabric in. We don't use any chemicals to pre-treat our fabric, for example and bacteria just need a little bit of oxygen to grow in. And instead of using high dyeing temperatures, we can, use, we can dye at room temperature. But this is not all. While plants need years to grow before we can harvest them for their colors, bacteria dyes just need three days to grow. Even the, re even the pigment, the leftover pigment, can be reused which means we can create a closed-loop system, which means zero waste. And another discovery we did was also quite unusual. We can dye synthetic fibers with the use of bacteria dyes, and this is quite remarkable, because normally when you are using a natural dye, and bacteria dyes are a natural dye, you cannot, um, you cannot dye it at natural fibers. You cannot dye it at synthetic fibers, excuse me. So this is quite unique. And not all bacterial colors are color fast. This pink color you see up here will fade when exposed to light, for example. But we do not necessarily see this as a bad thing, because we can take your favorite t-shirt, dye it in a seasonal color, darker, more saturated shades in winter that gradually fade to lighter shades in spring. And by the end of summer, we can dye a t-shirt all over again in a new trendy color. Because think of denim, for example. In denim, it's perfectly accepted that the color fades. And we even buy jeans that look like they have been worn before. So why don't we accept this from our other clothes? It just doesn't make sense. Also, the, these bacteria dyes, they are biodegradable. They are antimicrobial, anti-tumor, and they have UV-protecting qualities. 
The blue pigment we are using is also being used to treat leukemia, for example. Now, what if these benefits are staying in the fabric after dyeing and washing? This could be beneficial to our skin and health. So instead of wearing chemicals to our skin, we could wear fabrics that are actually healthy for us. Probably the most famous person who was using bacteria pigments was probably Alexander Fleming. He's the inventor of penicillin. And next to working as a scientist, he was also using the bacteria pigments to create beautiful paintings. So he was already combining science with art, just like we are doing now. And we collaborate with Rotterdam University, for example, Wageningen University, and our test future makers, and they help us to find answers to our questions. For example, if there are any toxic side effects to the use of bacterial pigments. And results found out that the, use, that the bacteria we are using are safe to wear on our skin. And although we are still working on a small lab scale, researchers, found, um, researchers believe that the process we are working in is upscalable, so this would require new collaborations in different fields. As designers from Living Color, we want to bring beauty to the world. But not only aesthetically, but also socially and responsibly. Living Color is good for our planet, has possible health effects, and is safe to work with and to wear. So, we want you to leave today with the conviction that growing bacteria as a dye factory can lead to a more sustainable way to color the world. Thank you. <laughs>